Hi, my name is Paul Amaral. I'm the president of Amaral Custom Fabrications here in Bristol, Rhode Island. I've been involved uh, in the art industry for a number of years, Amaral Custom Fabrications since 1997, and my very first involvement with public art was in 1986 with the construction of Spoonbridge and Cherry for Klaus Oldenburg for a company that I used to work for uh, way back in 1986. And what I want to talk about today is uh, what passes as a good paint job in the art industry. And right over here, we have a fairly well-known piece of art. Everybody's seen this before. It's Robin Indiana's Love Sculpture. And uh, it's been out in the weather for some time. And it's got some real issues going on here. So I really want to talk about what passes as a quality paint job in the art world, and uh, especially on aluminum, and how that uh, standard is far below what industry standards are for the painting of aluminum. Now let's come in here close and take a look and see what's going on. You can see that the uh, raw aluminum is extremely, uh, is, is visible. There is some corrosion issues going on here where water has uh, caused the aluminum to oxide. You see giant sheets missing of paint. Well, this is not painted correctly. And one of the things that you can do to tell that aluminum has not been painted correctly is look at the back side of a chip. There's only one color that you should see here and that color is a pea soup green or a yellowish green and that is the only primer that works on aluminum if you see any other color besides those two. Uh, you've got the wrong primer. Now that primer is manufactured by a number of different companies but it's the chemistry of the primer that causes it to be pea soup green. And as I said, if it's any other color, it's not a primer that's designed for aluminum. Now one of the things that hasn't happened here is that the aluminum is pretty much raw as it was from the factory. It has not been abraded. It has no tooth to it. So the adhesion to the aluminum is very low. As you can see, it's a simple matter to peel this paint right off. The proper way to paint aluminum is to abrade the surface of the aluminum and remove all the aluminum oxide that is on it. And aluminum oxide is pretty aggressive. It forms within 24 hours. It actually stops forming within one hour of fresh, of fresh aluminum being exposed with a sandpaper or some kind of grinding disc. Now, what we're doing is removing the oxide, uh, the oxygen molecule that's attached to the aluminum. Uh, aluminum oxide is a great coating. It's a, a good anodizing coating. In a raw aluminum setting, it's a great thing. However, aluminum oxide is often used for nonstick cooking pans. And you can see that aluminum oxide does not allow paint to adhere. So non-stick is not a good position to be in when you're trying to paint a metal. So we remove the aluminum oxide and you've got 24 hours to fix that surface. And I mean, what I mean by fixing is to replace the uh, missing electron in the aluminum with a material that uh, will not uh, it, it cause adhesion problems. Now there is materials that are used and that's where that color green comes from. That's the material that you have to have on the first layer of paint. Without it you will not have adhesion. So that has to be done within 24 hours of cleaning the oxides off the aluminum and then Within two or three hours after that, it has to be resealed with another kind of paint, an epoxy primer, whatever kind of a primer that you want to use. If you make 
if you get those two steps done, you're going to have a fairly successful paint job. But this is what the art world has accepted as standard quality for many, many years. And uh, it's really kind of shoddy. Okay, this type of paint system would not be approvable by the U.S. Coast Guard, would not be approvable by Lloyd's Registry of Shipping or the uh, American Yacht and Boating Council. There is a very specific way to paint aluminum to those codes, and it's by using that greenish primer for a ceiling primer second and a top coat that survives in a marine environment. But this is not being done on artwork, has not been done on artwork since uh, the explosion of uh, large outdoor public art way back in the 1960s. Uh, so we're seeing, as a company, we're seeing a number, uh, a very large number of aluminum pieces coming back to us with this very same problem. Uh, further comments about the aluminum, well, the U.S. Coast Guard says there's only one kind of aluminum you can use to build a ferry boat, and that is 5086 or 5083. It's a marine grade, has excellent corrosion resistance, which this alloy does not have excellent corrosion resistance. Um, and it also welds uh, very nicely and retains up to 80% of its strength after welding. Typical aluminum that I've seen come in here loses up to 70% of its strength upon welding. That's another phenomenon that we see with sculptures built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they aren't welded. They're not welded properly. There's a lot of cracks, a lot of things falling apart, a lot of corrosion, a lot of paint flaking off, just like we see here today. And there is another way to do this, and there is a way to do it successfully. I thank you. Oh. Okay, this type of paint system would not be approvable by the U.S. Coast Guard, would not be approvable by Lloyd's Registry of Shipping or the uh, American Yacht and Boating Council. There is a very specific way to paint aluminum to those codes, and it's by using that greenish primer for a ceiling primer second and a top coat that survives in a marine environment. So this is not being done on artwork has not been done on artwork since uh, the explosion of uh, large outdoor public art way back in the 1960s. Uh, so we're seeing, as a company, we're seeing a number, uh, a very large number of aluminum pieces coming back to us with this very same problem. Uh, further comments about the aluminum, well, the U.S. Coast Guard says there's only one kind of aluminum you can use to build a ferry boat and that is 5086 or 5083. It's a marine grade, has excellent corrosion resistance, which this alloy does not have excellent corrosion resistance. Um, and it also welds uh, very nicely and retains up to 80% of its strength after welding. Typical aluminum that I've seen come in here loses up to 70% of its strength upon welding. That's another phenomenon that we see with sculptures built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. They aren't welded. They're not welded properly. There's a lot of cracks, a lot of things falling apart, a lot of corrosion, a lot of paint flaking off, just like we see here today. And there is another way to do this. And there is a way to do it successfully. I thank you. Oh. Okay, this type of paint system would not be approvable by the U.S. Coast Guard, would not be approvable by Lloyd's Registry of Shipping or the uh, American Yacht and Boating Council. There is a very specific way to paint aluminum to those codes and it's by using that greenish primer for a ceiling primer second and a top coat that survives in a marine environment. 
that this is not being done on artwork, has not been done on artwork since uh, the explosion of uh, large outdoor public art way back in the 1960s. Uh, so we're seeing, as a company, we're seeing a number, uh, a very large number of aluminum pieces coming back to us with this very same problem. Uh, further comments about the aluminum, well, the U.S. Coast Guard says there's only one kind of aluminum you can use to build a ferry boat, and that is 5086 or 5083. It's a marine grade, has excellent corrosion resistance, which this alloy does not have excellent corrosion resistance. Um, and it also welds uh, very nicely and retains up to 80% of its strength after welding. Typical aluminum that I've seen come in here loses up to 70% of its strength upon welding. This is another phenomenon that we see with sculptures built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. They aren't welded. They're not welded properly. There's a lot of cracks, a lot of things falling apart, a lot of corrosion, a lot of paint flaking off, just like we see here today. And there is another way to do this, and there is a way to do it successfully. Okay, what we have here is a sculpture that my company built back in the early 2002, 2003, somewhere thereabouts. It immediately went out to Los Angeles, uh, Beverly Hills, and has been outside since that time. It just came back to us a couple weeks ago, so it's had a good 10 to 12 years in the weather, and the first thing we notice about it is there's a lot of white uh, deposits in it. Looks like it might be failed paint, but in fact, what it is, what's happened here is that this sculpture was outdoor on a lawn where a sprinkler system sprayed it with water just about every day of its life, and what we're seeing here is calcium and lime deposits that had formed. These actually can be removed. Very tough. You can see that my fingernail has removed some of the, some of the calcium and lime and, and there's black paint under here. Well, one of the things I really want to talk about is how this has held up. Uh, you notice that the paint is not falling off in sheets that in areas where there has been mechanical damages, there is no what's called filigree corrosion, which is corrosion that spreads out. The water has not gotten between the material and the paint. And if you come around this side and take a look in the insides at the joints, None of the joints have cracks. Even some of the joints that are not highly loaded and not very, not very large, there are no cracks there. And that's true throughout the whole sculpture. There is not a single crack in the aluminum. Now, when you look at the actual figures up here and you look at the colors, considering that this has been outdoors, for 11, uh, 10, or, uh, 10 or 12 years. And it's been hit with sun every day. It's been hit with uh, sprinkler water every day, groundwater, really. Um, ends up very little fading, very little corrosion. Um, the, the only corrosion that we have is immediately in areas where ha things have happened. And this has been hit by a lawnmower or a weed whacker. There's been some mechanical damages, but every damage shows no uh, progression of corrosion. Yes, there is corrosion in the immediate area where the damage occurred, but it hasn't seeped underneath the paint to cause more issues, to cause, cause more paint failure. This is aluminum that's been painted correctly, and it's also aluminum that is the correct alloy it has been welded to the same standard as the U.S. Coast Guard would accept. It's been 
welded with the same marine aluminum that the U.S. Coast Guard would accept. And we see a huge difference here in the quality uh, of the uh, paint holding up over, over time, uh, given the fact that it was uh, hit with sun and, and water every day of its life. Okay.